Welcome to Bits and Pieces Quilting. Today, we're going to talk about rulers, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Michelle. How many rulers and templates do you have? How many have you never used? How many do you use all the time? Which ones are your favorites? Which ones are you too afraid to use? Which ones have you used and didn't really like? Today, we're gonna dive in and take a look at my ruler collection. And I'm hoping to turn this into a series where I actually start to use some of the ones that have never been used and maybe rediscover some old favorites. So let's dive right in. So I've gotten all the rulers out and this is the complete collection. And I think before we start to talk about it, I think I'm going to divide them into three groups. There'll be the standard everyday group, the rulers I use every single day, then perhaps the rulers I know that I've used before, and then the rulers I've never used. So let's see how that sorting goes, and then we'll talk through what we have left. I ended up dividing my rulers into four different piles. And the first pile are the essential rulers or the everyday rulers. And that's these ones that are square rulers. My all time favorite is the six by 12 inch ruler. I use this one the vast majority of the time. And I think it is the most useful ruler that I have in my entire collection. But if I were to recommend just one ruler to a new quilter, I would recommend the a 24 inch ruler, whether it's five or six inches wide. This I think is the most versatile. And if you can only afford one ruler, I would recommend this because you can cut larger pieces with the 24 inches. It has a 45 degree line, a 60 degree line, and it will allow you to do just about everything you could ever want to do with just one ruler, despite the six by 12 being my favorite. So those two are core to the collection. I also have a smaller square ruler, a six inch square, which I find really useful for squaring things up, particularly half square triangles. But I have two of them and let me show you why. I'm not sure if you knew this or not, and I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but rulers wear out. So if I try and line this up, this corner in particular isn't square anymore. I have, and I don't know if I can hold it up closer to the camera so you can see it. I don't know if that's gonna work. I have trimmed so many half square triangles over the years and so often that I've shaved off the plastic on this corner so it isn't square anymore so if you're finding that you have trouble with accuracy and if you're finding that things don't match up quite as well as you'd like them to take a look at your ruler and see if that might be part of the problem so this ruler is still useful um, it has 45 degree lines on other corners as well but they're not as easy to read and the 60 degree line through here yeah it's not quite as easy to read so I replaced this one with a new one. And I'm glad I did, and I probably don't really need this one in my collection anymore, but it's still here. And on my favorite six by 12 inch ruler, again, I don't think you'll be able to see it on camera, but between the seven and nine inch mark on this side, there's a bit of a wow here. And I think, again, I've just hit the plastic a couple too many times with my ruler. So I generally cut on this side and we'll need to replace this in the not too distant future. I also have a couple of small squares, which I bought them undoubtedly on sale somewhere at some point, thinking that I would use them for squaring things up. And surprisingly, I don't use them nearly as much as I thought that I would. I actually prefer the larger square in order to square things up because I can put my hand on it a lot more firmly as I'm cutting to square things up. With a smaller ruler, if it's a really small piece, if it's a two inch, then this works all right. But if I'm cutting anything bigger than that, I actually prefer the slightly larger ruler in order to do that. So 
I don't use these nearly as often as I thought that I would. And finally, in the everyday rulers, I feel very privileged to have a 12 and a half inch square. This is really, really useful when you want to square up things at blocks that are eight inches, 10 inches, 12 inches square, and it's, a, it's really nice to have. You can still get the same results or the same impact by putting other rulers together. So if you're squaring up an eight inch block, you take your six inch ruler and you add a two inch bit from this other ruler together and you still have your long edge and that works quite well, but it is also really nice to have the big square to trim things up. So those are the kind of stock standard everyday rulers and templates in my collection. And so if we move on to the second pile, that's these ones here. And these are the ones that I've used and mostly enjoyed. But let's go through them and I'll talk to you a little bit about what I've got here. So for those of you who have seen it, I did a video recently I called the Puzzle Quilt with these templates designed to be used with a 10 inch square. But in the video, I show you a way to use them a little bit differently and just to use them from regular, um, regular yardage. And that turned out to be a really cute puzzle quilt project. I used the A block with a background fabric to create a four, a four pointed star with the rest of the pieces scrappy. And as a result of some of the comments and the amount of fun that I had making this project, I think I'm going to remake it, but this time use the E block as my background piece, because I think this shape right here is going to give me a really interesting pinwheel when I put four blocks together. So that's going to be a, a near upcoming project with these templates that has been a lot of fun to use. I also have a tumbling block template from Missouri Star Quilt Company. And I'll put some photos here into the video to show you some of my tumbling block quilts. This is a great template for something quick, something easy, but still with enough complexity that it has a lot of visual interest to it. So I really like this. And the pieces are big enough that you can really showcase your fabric, which sometimes, if it's not very pretty fabric, you want to cut it up nice and small, but other times you really want to showcase that fabric. And so I like the tumbling block template for that. I also have a 45 degree kaleidoscope ruler. Love this. I'll put some photos up of the uh, quilts that I've made with this ruler. And many rulers come with these little instruction books. And if they do, keep them. Keep them because it'll walk you through how to use it. And it will usually show you alternate ways to use it. So you can really get the most out of a single ruler. So I've used this for fairly traditional kaleidoscope blocks, but I think that there's still a lot to explore with this template, and I look forward to doing that. Oh, then we have the apple core. <laughs> for anyone that has seen my Scrappy Trunk show, I have made an apple cord quilt, and I'll put a photo in here, and it's so pretty. I love it. But what a trauma to make it. As I said in the trunk show video, sewing one apple core to another apple core, so sewing this curve here, wasn't that difficult once I got the hang of it. So I had two, two pieces sewn together. Where it got incredibly challenging for me was sewing the two Zs to a four Z. So you have an S curve that you need to sew together. And that's where things got incredibly difficult for me. And it got to the point where I really didn't enjoy it. So I think the apple core template is probably going to get rehomed, perhaps to somebody who has more skills than I do, or maybe just more patience than I do. There's the apple core. I also have this interesting ruler. Um, I think it's just like my 24 inch ruler. It's made by the same people. It's just a, a straight ruler with a nice 45 degree angle on it. I've only used it once that I remember. And that's to make this quilt here with some beautiful French provincial sort of themed fabric and these giant stars and cutting the right angle on the edge of the strips. It was really useful to have this ruler. 
but I think that there's a lot more for me to discover to make better use of this one. Next, we have the Super Sidekick from Jaybird Quilts. This has been incredibly useful, and it's another one of those rulers that has this great booklet. And I think the, the folks at, at Jaybird Quilts are, are clearly, clearly really, really bright. Loads and loads and loads of ideas with this ruler. I used it in particular to design and, and construct my 3D big block baby quilt. I have a tutorial for that and you can download the pattern from my website. What you need is a 60 degree triangle and that's what this triangle here is on this super sidekick ruler. Lots more to explore here in terms of the shapes that this can make and the way that this ruler can be used. So looking forward to digging into that. Next, I have this super fun Quilt As You Go template from um, Daisy and Grace in partnership with Missouri Star. This um, Quilt As You Go, you cut the backing piece, which is the large template. You cut the smaller batting and, and top piece with the smaller template, and then sew them together into individual hexagon units as a Quilt As You Go. I've made some table runners with this, which were a ton of fun but haven't really done much more to explore using these templates. And I had a brilliant idea just the other day. Jason was cleaning out some of his dresser drawers and had some old jeans that he was ready to part with. And I snagged those because I didn't want them going into landfill and they weren't suitable enough to, uh, to donate. But I think denim as the back with no batting and just a piece of fabric in the center might make a really cool car quilt, picnic quilt, beach quilt, something like that. So very keen to explore what that might look like and how many pairs of jeans I might need in order to make an entire project with this. So stay tuned for that one. Next, I have the pineapple trim tool. I have used this before and I'll put the two photos in here, one with solids scrappy solids and one that just is completely scrappy and it is such a fun way to make pineapple blocks. I have seen others use a paper piecing method, method which is also great but this is a lot of fun and again it comes with a booklet that tells you all the things you need to know to use the tool. Keep these and I recently went through my um, scrap collection the other day to see about making another pineapple block, so or another pineapple quilt. So stay tuned for that one. And then finally, in this grouping of rulers, I have this Drunkard's Path template from Missouri Star Quilts. Once I recovered from making the apple core quilt, I thought, OK, I'll give curves another try and did this um, Drunkard's Path template. And I used some beautiful, bold, bright K facet prints to make this incredible project. I just loved it. And these curves were not that difficult to do at all, especially once you got going and got the hang of it. I am really keen to do a lot more exploration around what's possible with this template. Perhaps multiple curves in the same block, working just with color to organize the blocks in different ways for different effects. I think there's a ton of potential there and definitely, definitely look forward to working more with this. So that's the pile of templates I've known and loved, except the apple core, which I didn't love. My third pile are rulers I've had for a while and I don't remember what to do with them. I'm certain that I've used them but I need to rediscover these rulers. So you can see here sitting on the top is the Trirex. Let me pull that out. Um, I, I know that I've used this in the past, but I can't quite think of what I may have done with it. But there's all kinds of great ideas in the booklet that comes with the Trirex. And one in particular is this, the Storm at Sea block. This is my all-time quilt I want to make but never have quilt. And if the Trirex can help me do that, then that's definitely something I need to explore. 
One of the things when I first thought I wanted to make a kaleidoscope quilt was thinking that the Trirex was going to work for that. And it's really important if you're going to try a triangle quilt to make sure your angles match or the angles are right. I thought that this was going to be a 45 degree angle and it absolutely is not. You can see these don't line up at all. So then I thought, well, maybe this is a 60 degree angle and it's not that either. So I need to get out a protractor and figure out what actual angle this is, but it doesn't matter because it's not for kaleidoscopes and it's not for 60 degree triangles. So I think it's special and unique all on its own and definitely something to rediscover and re-explore. I also have the easy angle and the companion angle quilt rulers. I think Bonnie Hunter uses these all the time and I don't recall ever, I don't know if I've used them or not. I think I probably have, I've had them for a long time. The instructions definitely tell me how to use them, but I think there's a lot to discover here with this. And then this one, I think, this is a 90 degree angle meaning if you sew two pieces of fabric together into a long strip on both sides you can use this to cut bias squares out of that strip of fabric so i need to experiment a little and discover that but i think that cutting making strip tubes and using this ruler to cut different sizes has a ton of potential and then thankfully it's got all of the instructions here on the back so something to rediscover for sure and then finally the wonder cut ruler it's clear that i've used it recently because i've got a piece of painter's tape here marking off a, a random line it's it's not on any of the established lines on the ruler but i think i was using this to make half square triangles Thankfully, it comes with some instructions and definitely worth rediscovering again. And then the final pile of rulers are the ones I know I've never used and definitely, definitely worth exploring. I think in these times as cost of living gets higher and higher, that we really need to look at what we've already got and find new and interesting ways to use what we already have rather than spending money on new things. And these are the ones that I've never used. So I have a large hexagon and a small hexagon, and you can see the small one's never been used because I haven't even pulled the paper off of it yet. I have an idea for this, which um, years ago I made a black and white quilt with some Dresden plates on it. And I think that might be worth a remake using the hexagons for the black and white pieces in the background. So something to explore with the large and the small hexes. I have a new square ruler still in its packaging, so that should probably have gone into the first pile. But once the others start to get a little shaved around the corners, I'll uh, open that up and use it. I have this biased square ruler, and I am absolutely going to have to look this up online. I have no idea how to use it. I don't really understand what the markings mean. I, I have no idea. So I'm going to have to Google that one. If anyone has this and you have any tips, please leave me a comment down below. Love to hear from you. I have this cute little triangle, which I suspect might be, yeah, it is a 45 degree triangle. You can see I've never used it. The paper hasn't come off of it. So this might be something worth rehoming or giving to someone else because I already have another 45 degree angle. So I know a new quilter who might be able to use this because it's the same size as the ruler I've already got. I have this one, it's called the Wacky Web. Looks like a kite to me. Not really sure what to do with it, so it's worth a look through some videos on the Missouri Star website to see if they've used this template and if there's any ideas that could stimulate an idea for me to use this one. I also have two, <laughs> I don't know why I have two, Dresden plate templates. This one's still in its shrink wrap, this one with its plastic still on. I have no idea what Dresden plate template I used to make the black and white quilt with, but clearly I used something. 
And so these ones, um, I think there's a huge, a whole world of Dresden plates that are worth exploring. Very traditional Dresden plates, but also some really modern approaches to a Dresden plate. So definitely need to dig into this world and explore it a little bit more. And then finally, I have an orange peel template. I am really keen to try sewing these curves. Uh, Kathy Martin at Catbird Quilts is doing a beautiful orange piece quilt, orange peel quilt right now, and she's piecing it. So uh, I'm not sure what template she's using. I need to maybe watch her videos again and check that out. But I've also seen this done where you cut the fabric and then you also cut the interfacing. Sew around, turn it right side out, and then fuse it onto like an applique. And that looks so beautiful. And there is so much potential again with color and placement and design with this that it's absolutely worth exploring. And then the final two little weird things in my tool drawer were these two pieces. This, I think, is something that Mum had, and I put a took a copy of it on a um, piece of template plastic, but I'm not sure how accurate my tracing was, so I'm not sure about this one. And then I have this strange little, it's called a point turner from Oxmoor House. It looks like the sort of thing that comes as a free gift when you buy a, a quilting book or a magazine. I'm not really sure what this is or how to use it. So something else that I'm going to need to Google. If anybody has any insights into what this is and how to use it, please leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear. Have you seen some rulers in my collection that you also have? And maybe some you've never used? I hope you'll stick with me as we go through this series and rediscover and start to use some of those things that are already in our collection. I've already done one video on this theme with the puzzle quilt, looking at a way to use those templates in a way that they weren't necessarily intended to be used. I hope you'll check out that video and I hope you'll stay tuned for some of these future projects. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to make the most of your fabric bits and pieces and your rulers.